Welcome to City Service. I'm City Councilor Marianne Labarge, Chair. I'm joined by Ward 2 City Councilor Karen Foster, Vice Chair, and Ward 1 City Councilor Michael Quinlan. Ward 7 City Councilor Rachel Mayor will be late for the meeting, but she possibly will be here. This meeting is called to order. Roll call, Laura. Councilor Labarge. Here. Councilor Foster. Here. Councilor Mayori is going to be late, as you said, and Councilor Quinlan. Here. I would like to announce that this meeting is being audio video recorded. Our next item on the agenda is public comment. Is there any member of the public who would like to address the committee in any subject? I don't see any public. No. So we have no public comment. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of August 26, 2021. Yes, and, and I'm afraid I'm just asking for that to be postponed until the next meeting. Do we have to make a motion for that? Yes. Yes, you should make a motion to postpone it. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councillor. Roll call? Okay. Yes, roll call. Yeah. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have items referred to committee 21.324 appointment of Pamela Powers as city clerk referred by City Council on September 22nd, 2021. An introduction and recommendation by Mayor David J. Narkowitz. So Mayor, um, welcome to City Service and it's a pleasure having you here. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Mayor. And we'll let you do your introductory and your presentation. Thank you. Certainly, yeah, not much of a presentation. And I believe the candidate for City Clerk needs little introduction. Um, luckily, they've been voted city clerk by the voters of Northampton. So that sort of, um, they're, they're, they're a known quantity. But, you know, as I, as I said in my um, memo uh, to the council, uh, you know, with our recent charter change, um, we are now moving away from the elected city clerk model to the appointed city clerk model. So this is a somewhat historic appointment. Um, and, uh, uh Potentially, uh, Pamela Powers could be the last elected uh, city clerk and the first appointed city clerk in Northampton history. Um, she was obviously appointed back in no elected back in November of 2017 by the voters. Um, she had uh, served as interim city clerk appointed by the city council back in July of 2017, uh, when then city clerk Wendy Mazza retired. Um, she has significant experience uh, for the city prior to working in the city clerk's office, including as assistant city clerk um, and administrative assistant to the city council. Um, she has a, a bachelor of arts. She has an MBA. Um, and most importantly, she has been running the day-to-day -day operations of the city clerk um, and, and during some of the most challenging times um, in terms of um, running an election during the middle of a global pandemic, for example, um, as well as being um, the clerk who's implemented some significant changes from the state level, including uh, mail-in voting and um, some of the other improvements um, that have been made, but obviously that have required a lot of um, organizational skills and staffing, et cetera. So I'm honored to introduce um, our um, soon to be former elected city clerk, Pamela Powers, and obviously recommend her strongly to be the city's first appointed city clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Before I open the floor, is there any discussion from any of the two other councilors? Councilor Foster? Councilor Quinlan? Uh, no, th well, I guess I would just comment the same comment that I made in uh, in the full council when this was referred, which is uh, what a great luxury for the mayor to have uh, a qualified city clerk who has already been approved by the entire city. Thank you. Okay, 
So is there a motion to recommend? Move a positive recommendation to a full council. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second to recommend Pamela Powers, a city clerk to the full city council, to the position of city clerk, pursuant to the recent change to our city charter, converting her current elected position to an appointed city department head. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. The motion is unanimous. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go right in. What I'm going to ask is that if there is no objection, I would like to change the order of the agenda slightly. Um, I would like to bring up the department update at the city clerk's office, um, Pam Powers, which is number six, um, discussion with city clerk Pamela Powers, general update on city clerk's office activities, including overview of the September 28th 2021 preliminary election, preparation for November 2nd, 2021 general election, update on status of ranked choice voting committee's deliberations, and update on presenting project. Yes, hello everybody, thank you. Thank you for your unanimous vote. That was really exciting and I'm very pleased to be serving the, the uh, residents of the city of Northampton longer um, and not by having to be elected. So this is pretty exciting. Um, so as Councilor Labarge mentioned, uh, we just completed the uh, September 28th, uh, 2021 preliminary election. And at that election, there were 5,274 people who voted. Uh, for candidates for mayor and for at-large city council. Um, as everyone knows, um, we did have early voting as well as in-person voting, as well as absentee voting. So um, early voting was done in person and by mail. We had a few people who opted to do the absentee in person and uh, by mail as well, um, but a majority of the people came out and voted at the polls. There was uh, a little under a thousand that voted before election day. And the rest of that 5,000 number that uh, I gave you, the 5,200 and uh, so 5,274 voters, uh, the rest of that actually went to the polls on election day. So my results have been finalized. Uh, they'll be sent to the secretary of the Commonwealth Election Division tomorrow. And we're already moving ahead with the November uh, election with the drawing of the names for candidates uh, in the order that they'll appear on the ballot. That's gonna take place at five o'clock tonight. Um, and we're already moving ahead toward doing all of the same things. Uh, early in, uh, in person and by mail voting, uh, absentee voting uh, either in person or by mail and um, the election day voting as well. So I anticipate the, the turnout is gonna be a little bit higher. Um, we, did, we did do about what I initially predicted at the preliminary election, 5,000, uh, is what my prediction was. And we did a little bit over that for the preliminary, but I know that the, the upcoming November election is gonna be uh, you know, a tad busier. For starters, we're gonna have uh, early voting on a Saturday and Sunday, which I think will help draw more people who can't participate on a weekday. Um, and there's gonna be a greater number of days. So it's gonna be Saturday, Sunday, and then the following Monday, the last week in October, and I think it ends on October 29th. So the hours, the days, times, and hours are already up on our website, and we're just preparing for, for the um, November election. Any questions about yeah. that? 
Yes, sure. Yeah. Yep. I know Wendy said to me, she said, when Pam told us what she felt the percentage was going to be, she hit it right off the bat and you did. You yep. know, yep. I mean, that was a low percentage, Pam. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, I, I, I was very surprised at that because we, you know, the state sent out postcards uh, announcing that the that the early voting was going to continue uh, through the end of this year, and I thought it would be a little bit higher. But when the right after the postcards went out, I expected a huge flurry of applications to be brought into the office, and it just didn't happen. It just, you know, they cut, came in in you know a few a day, and it was something that we could handle with the uh, the existing staff. So yeah. yeah, but I think you're going to be right. I think. On election for November 2nd, I think you're going to see a lot of people coming out. I have that feeling yep. just yep. talking with people and so forth. So I think we're going to see a significant difference. That's great. I'm glad. <laughs> Michael, did you have a, Councilor Quinlan, did you have a question? I did have a question, uh, which is just about uh, kind of like a the technical sense of, of having ballots available if by some uh, amazing uh, opportunity, all 100% of people showed up. Uh, you have ballots available for everyone. I mean, that, it, that seems like, you know, we never get quite that high a percentage, but you must have to be prepared for that sort of thing. I'm just curious about that, how that, how that works. Well, one of the things that the state did do to sort of help on the amount of ballots that, uh, you know, we no longer need to order is it used to be a separate ballot for absentee, a separate ballot for early, and then a separate ballot for the, the actual uh, election day. They combined the early and the absentee, so that's great. We had a total of 12 absentee voters and uh, over 900 early voters. So that was a smart move on their part to sort of help reduce the amount of ballots that we would need to order. But yeah, we are required. I have to order over 50% of each style ballot. And based on the outcome of what we saw in 2020, I actually really did over purchase ballots because I really thought initially it was going to be uh, a, a huge turnout, but it didn't end up being that way. So yeah, we have a, an abundance of ballots from the preliminary election. Oh, you yep. have to be safe, right? You have to be prepared. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yep. Great. Councilor Labarch, I just wanted to let you know, uh, Councilor Mayor is in the waiting room. She's you. coming. I'll let her in. She, she's in the waiting room. Thank okay, you. Thank you, Karen. There she is. So you also wanted to know about the ranked choice voting. The committee has been meeting about twice a month to look at what options are available in terms of how to rank choice, uh, what method we will be using to, um, you know, sort of rank our candidates and what the requirements are by law for us to put forward in terms of legislation. I guess there's a couple of different ways that you can, uh, you know, obviously rank your choices. You can, if you had 20, uh, 20 people on the ballot, for instance, you could rank them one to 20, uh, but you can also choose to just rank what you feel would be the top five. Um, and so those are the, that, that, that's one of the decisions that the committee will need to look at. In addition to that, there's also a way to distribute or redistribute, I should say, the excess votes for a candidate who has achieved a certain threshold and no longer needs more votes to um, be elected. So the committee is looking at different options for that and trying to figure out what's going to be best for Northampton. It's been quite an interesting discussion because uh, you know, there's a certain, you know, there's a certain school of thought that for somebody who gets a huge margin of the votes that that person's votes should not be diluted in any way as a result of the ranked choice voting. And uh, 
um, there's the other school of thought that says the main goal is to get your candidate elected. So once that person meets the threshold, then perhaps somebody who um, would, you know, be sort of um, a next best second choice should take should be able to take advantage of, you know, a certain amount of those votes by having the second choice be counted and move forward or distributed to other candidates. So it is quite an interesting process. The committee, I think, uh, will, you know, they're sort of hoping that they can get something done by the end of the year. But the more we get into it, the more questions that there are for us. And so I think it might be a little bit, you know, past uh, January of 2022 and with the goal of getting it uh, to the legislators um, for a vote, hopefully by early spring. So it's, it's very interesting. It's an interesting process. Pam, who, what does this committee consist of? Who's on it? So there's two people who came who joined the committee that were formerly uh, charter review committee people. That's uh, Councillor Dwight and Bob Bullrice, who, came, who has come to our community from Cambridge. And Bob is actually the chair of the committee, which is great because he, uh, he has, uh, you know, a sort of a, a really good understanding of ranked choice voting and why it's good for the community and also um, is really good at helping us research what the options are and um, getting us resources for sort of helping us to understand the, the concept of ranked choice voting. Um, Attorney Seawald is there as sort of a, a, sort of a, a, a non-voting person, non-voting member to help us with the legislation and to keep us on track with what the, you know, what the objectives are for the committee. Um, there's a gentleman who is, uh, there's two members of the public. One is Mark Ventola and the other is John Crowley. Um, Mark has an interest in promoting ranked choice voting. I understand that he um, is has some uh, a good understanding from the folks at, at Voter Choice Massachusetts in terms of how ranked choice voting works and has an interest in helping to implement that. Uh, John Crowley, I believe is a professor at Smith um, and he also has an interest in helping to get ranked choice voting off the ground. Um, Catherine, uh, Catherine Kay is also a member of the board, the, the committee. She is on the board of registrars for the city of Northampton. So she is representing the boards, uh, any of the board's concerns and helping to sort of make sure that the elements of elections that we know them uh, by law are being followed and that when we put any legislation together that it will help um, fulfill the requirements for um, mass general law in terms of elections, so. Thank you. You're very welcome. Councilor Mayor, and thank you for being here. Yeah, so sorry to miss the beginning of it. Oh, a lot of school, school meetings at the beginning of the year. That you, um, but I'm glad you're here. Uh, Clerk Powers, I just um, I was wondering when in your conversation um, with others about the ranked choice voting, is, is the idea also that maybe it would uh, boost um, voter turnout? Because I noticed, you know, we have pretty low, you know, the pre preliminaries seem to have very low voter turnout. And it's just it's hard to, to do something about that. And I was just curious if you if the feeling is without preliminaries, like voter turnout would go up. Yeah, so I think the goal for Northampton is to have every position be ranked choice, you know, that we would rank all of the positions regardless. I know East Hampton only does those positions that are single seats. So for example, the at-large positions for city council are not 
subject wow. to rank choice voting, but they have in their charter that they do not do preliminary elections at all. So mm -hmm. since we do, we um, are looking to eliminate preliminary elections by having every seat ranked choice voted. And uh, as a result, um, I think the, the regular municipal elections that we see will definitely see a higher turnout. One of the things, one of the very biggest concerns that we have right now is voter education because the way that some of the, the uh, options are being presented, um, I, I think in the mind, especially of Catherine Kay, um, her feeling is that the voter intent is not gonna be um, promoted by some of the options that have been presented from ranked choice voting. Mm -hmm. So for ex as an example, um, th there was talk about ranking the choices between let's say one in five, okay? So let's say you have a candidate that you believe um, should be the mayor, you, you, that's your first choice. And then you, then you would, you know, the th thought was that you would rank the second one that you thought should be mayor second and third, fourth and fifth, okay? But let's say somebody says, you know, I don't care about my second, third and fourth positions. I only care about the first and the last. I definitely don't want this person to be mayor. I definitely want this person to be mayor. So you, you, you put number one there and you put number five at your last choice. Hmm. There's been some discussion about truncating uh, a person's choices um, if, if they skip ranks. So if they skipped a rank, for example, um, you know, there's been some discussion that you just cut that off, you just truncate it, don't count any of the other, you know, things that the voter has indicated. And so there was some discussion about, does that really you know, match what the voters intent was and is that really fair to the voter? So, you know, it's things like that that are sort of, you know, we're discussing and making sure that um, it's clear to the voter that you should, you know, the, the education component that, you know, that the, that education for voters is definitely necessary and that whatever we do as a city definitely uh, there has to be a huge component about training and educating the voter about, you know, all of the elements of ranked choice voting, so. Thank you, that sounds a bit daunting. <laughs> Councilor yeah. Foster, oh, okay. sorry. I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, that's it, uh, you know, it's interesting um, that East Hampton doesn't have ranked choice voting for um, for races where there's where there's more than one seat um, because honestly looking at the city council at large election this year I, I really wish we had ranked choice voting so I'm so glad as a city that we're moving toward it and it's interesting about how if we had ranked choice um, we could eliminate preliminary elections um, you know and, and knowing that very often the voters who come out to preliminaries, might be different voters that come out to the general. Uh, it's such an interesting opportunity to think about, you know, kind of catching perhaps a broader swath of, of voters. Um, the other question I have for you is about the cost. Um, if you could sort of estimate what we as a city might save by not having preliminary elections. And I, I know that's really difficult because it's, it's by ward or by mayor and it's, you know, kind of race by race. But if you have a sense of of what it costs us when we have a preliminary. I would love to know that. Right, so our preliminary election, um, people-wise, of course, people uh, is usually the most expensive component of uh, elections. Um, I just completed our payroll that, that uh, with just the additional staff that we hired was in excess of $22,000 just for poll workers. That doesn't include the staff um, 
any overtime that we would incur as a result of the maintenance crew helping to set up and the people, you know, the maintenance staff who helped us on election night. So, you know, but it's sort of a hollow win for us in terms of that particular cost because you may know that the city or the state is moving forward with uh, early voting for all elections and that there's some discussion about um, having uh, either the ballot be mailed or the application be mailed. I think at the state level, it's gonna be the application. Um, but, you know, so while we might be saving money there, it's of course, when any preliminary that we have, it's definitely gonna, you know, uh, we're, we're still gonna have to, at, at the state level, we're still going to have those incurred costs. So, Pam, I have one question. Now that this is coming to city council for approval of being a non elected city clerk, mm -hmm. what is going to be the significant difference of how your office will be operated? Who will be your boss, which you have not had a boss, right? Nobody has for yeah. years where you could say goodbye <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. But now, so, now things are changing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So who is going to be your boss? Yep. And will there be any changes? But I do know looking at the state laws, the regulations, Okay, as a city clerk, you have to abide by what they tell you you right. have to do, right? Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. So so the day-to-day -day responsibilities of a city clerk for the most part are determined by state law. So any sort of you know licenses and and that sort of thing, election laws, um, vital record laws, all those are prescribed in our mass general laws. Um, I think in terms of the hierarchy, the, re the reporting structure here in the city, I think the, the, the mayor nominates me, um, the city council approves the position, the person named to the position, and then um, the position uh, reports directly to the mayor. So that is definitely um, a change now uh, instead of being elected. Um, one good thing I think that that's coming out of this is that as a result, the, um, the person who ultimately, you know, um, replaces or takes over this position in the future, um, that person doesn't necessarily need to live in Northampton. Exactly. So for example, our current um, assistant city clerk, if she were inclined to take over um, as the city clerk, she would, you know, because, because of the change, she would be able to, to take over and be nominated by the mayor. Um, if, if that was agreeable by po both parties. Um, and so it also gives the, 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 um, the mayor's office the opportunity to find somebody who's got the right credentials right. for the position, um, you know, it, to go beyond just the inhabitants of the city of Northampton. So as with everything, you know, things have become more challenging, more difficult. Um, mass general law is sometimes a little bit difficult to understand, to sort of put things in place for, you know, this, this past 2020 election, it was kind of crazy. And so you want to be sure that you have the right person who is, you know, operationally can do what needs to be, de you know, what needs to happen in order to carry off a big event like the 2020 elections. Exactly. I, I have to say at the charter review when I spoke and when Mazna spoke, and that was exactly what her concerns were. Yep. Every city clerk became ill. And looking at the office that you have mm -hmm. and the employees, we would be in trouble because we don't have anybody there that lives in the city of Northampton. 
And I also stressed looking at the recommendations. That's all you had to do for the application is to say who you are, your age, um, a high school diploma, and a resident of Northampton. That's it for experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, anybody could go ahead at 18 years old and apply for that position, yep. not knowing how intense mm -hmm. what you have to do in that office. I am so happy that you are our city clerk, not a lot, you. you'll be there until you're ready to retire. <laughs> and I wish you the best of luck, Pam. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> Any other questions? Karen. Um, Pam, if we could talk re-precincting, um, I, I would appreciate that. I wasn't able to go to the most recent meeting. Yeah, the re-precincting has been interesting. I think, uh, you know, in my introductory meeting, I think most of the counselors were there. I had indicated that with, without a doubt, because of the shifts in where the density of the population is, there will be changes in Northampton. And that, that is something that we all have to accept. Uh, the committee met on October 4th to start looking at the actual data. Uh, we looked at the map that the state had recommended and we said, this is definitely not gonna work for Northampton. I think that was a you know what a majority of the people who participated in that discussion said, um, realizing that, that there are tough you know, decisions that are gonna have to be made um, what we tried to do was look at, at what was a good fit for Northampton. Um, we, uh, James Thompson completely threw out the map that the state sent us, reconfigured uh, a map that looks more like what we have in 2010, but um, sort of, you know, tweaked it a little bit so that it's going to be able to keep us in the, the right ballpark for the numbers that we need to achieve. So as you know, as we mentioned at the preliminary meeting, the introductory meeting, um, it's the average population, which for Northampton has gone up by about a thousand people. Divide that by 14 and every ward and every precinct has to be that average plus or minus 5%. So, um, I can tell you that just based on looking at the numbers, Ward 2 uh, is definitely going to consolidate. They have more density in a smaller geographical area now. And as a result of that, this, you know, there's sort of like this ripple effect. It affects every other ward and precinct. So it's, it's, uh, it's, we're, I'm, we're meeting tonight at 7 o'clock. Um, the goal is to get as close as we possibly can. Um, the state has indicated that, that we need to get a map back from them with legal descriptions. And um, so there's gotta be an exchange of information between the state and between the city. Um, I. I don't know what that means for the October 7th meeting right now. I don't think that we are gonna be prepared to have the legal descriptions. Um, so what that might mean is that we have a straw man map for October 7th and we review it at city council that we hold a public hearing on October 14th and that it goes to the full city council for a vote on October 21st. So I don't think it requires two readings, um, but it might, it, it definitely might, so. Pam, can I ask you, you said it's coming to city council on October 7th? That was the original target before the state came back to us and said uh, that you need to have us your legal descriptions and um, let us prepare the map for you based on what you tell us. But as we know, James Thompson is, he, he is you know, an ace when it comes to 
the geo mapping and um, you know preparing a map that sort of uh, is going to fit the requirements. So. Okay, and what is October 14th? Is that coming to city council or are you having an open public hearing on that? Or well, what? We, we talked about the committee making this as transparent as possible that we would have hold an open, uh, an open session for people to see the changes, to make comments, um, you know, pretty much <clears throat> we expected that there's gonna be a lot of, you know, concern because Mm -hmm. there are some significant changes and that that goes without saying but Pam I've been used to this being a city councilor of seeing the blocks change on this ward and many other wards and it's like whoa you know it's got to be done and yeah I, and I think you've got some good people on the committee very intelligent can work together and do the best that they can We've mm -hmm. got to get it into the state. We have no choice here. Yeah, I mean, if you if you know if anyone can you know tune in tonight, the the link is out on the website. If you need me to send it, I can resend it. Um, but you'll see basically what we came up with as a map. Uh, you'll see what folks have indicated have been the concerns. I can send those out as well. Um, and then hopefully, you know, we can, we can sort of finalize a map tonight that will go to, uh, you know, eventually go to city council. What time, was your, <clears throat> what time was your meeting today? It's at seven, seven o'clock tonight. I thought you said you had a meeting today also. I have a, a meeting, or a, excuse at me, at five, five o'clock, we're doing the pulling of the names for oh. the position on the ballot. Okay. So that's oh. at five. Okay. Thank you. Busy day today. Yeah. Councilor Mayor. No, just going to say, I mean, it's, yeah, it's no joke. It really looks like Ward 7 and Ward 6 are trying to eat the rest of the city. <laughs> I mean, I guess they just, I guess Ward 6 and Ward 7 specifically seem to grow each time because our populations just aren't growing as fast as they were too. Is that what's happening? Yeah. 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 I know. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's, it's huge, right? Yeah. I, I'm going to need Ward two is tiny. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I told, Pam we're, gonna, I told right. Pam we're going to put in a grant so that we have our own little go-kart, a couple of seats on it and work together, pick up Pam, pick up Wendy and off we go. <laughs> right. I mean, the pedal people won't come out here. I need a bullet train to get around. It's getting bigger and bigger. Um, but so, um, Pam, are the, are the community representatives we sent working out okay? Is that Absolutely. Well? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, I, I think one of the things in our last discussion, one of the things that we said about the map that the state sent us was that it's that, that map is not going to work for you know, one of the biggest concerns that I have, of course, is the polling locations. Right. And we, it's not like we have an excess of, of real estate to sort of say, you know, we're going to set this up as a polling location where they're recommending that we make the boundary lines. There is no place. No. So it's somebody would have to drive, you know, almost eight miles in the city of Northampton to get to their polling location from Ward 7, yeah. the proposed Ward 7 up to, you know, up to, yeah, so it's kind of crazy. It's, it, it is. And we're trying to, we're trying to minimize the amount of impact that this has on especially Ward 6, because that was the, uh, the ward before that, that took the greatest amount of the brunt oh, of changes. Time. That was really brutal the last that time. Was so. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Very yeah. upsetting. Yeah. Yeah. So they're so they're looking at all those things. Council Foster? Yeah, I don't know if I should be calling on no, you. That's fine. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? <laughs> I'm so used to waiting, right? Um, I I guess I, it's more of a of a statement or a question. I don't know where I thought, but um it's interesting as the boundaries shift that we'll have people in the city who are then elected or represented by people, um, you know, for this interim period of time, right? That they 
didn't have the opportunity to participate in voting for. So that's just a, an interesting thing as you look at the boundaries moving around, um, you know, kind of how that shifts just before the next municipal election. Yeah, I, I think this is not gonna take place until July of 2022. The changes. Okay, I was thinking it was sooner than that. Got it. Okay. Yeah, no, it, it, because after it leaves us, we send it to the Secretary of the Commonwealth, and then it has to go to um, the 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 state, the House of Representatives, and the state house, uh, the uh, Senate to uh, be approved as well. So, yeah, it's that what they're telling us, and that makes sense because. Um, you know, it's it's not gonna. There's no preliminary next year. Right now, in the in the spring, you know, a state preliminary. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's gonna make a lot of sense for it to take effect in July of next year. We're gonna be safe for a while, Carrot. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, Pam, for being here. And thank you. Great so getting much. that information from you. Thank you. Okay. New business. Our next meeting is on November 1st, 2021 at 4 p.m. Excuse I, me, Councilor Labarge, did you want to do the appointment of um, oh, Carolyn yeah, Sanders? I her. Yes. Since uh, Councilor Rachel Mayor is here. Um, let's say 21.327 appointment to council on aging referred to city service on 9-22-2021 council on aging. Carolyn Sandell, 132 Chesterfield Road leads term October 2021 through June 2024 to fill a vacancy. Councilor Muriari, would you give your report on your conversation of your applicant Carolyn Sandell? Right. So we had, yeah, we had a lengthy conversation because she lives on my street and I didn't realize she had relatively new. They just moved here a few months ago. And so she's looking to plug into the community and this is her wheelhouse and she actually calls it her passion. Um, she's an executive director of assisted living for seniors and I'm blanking. She, she came from uh, the Boston area and I'm blanking on her, her former city. But um, so she seemed raring to go. And I, I always appreciate when there's a mix, she's a, not, a non senior, she's younger than me. And, and this has been, she's been working in the field for a long time. So I, th I always I kind of appreciate that when to have varying ages actually serving on the Council on Aging. I just think that's kind of nice. Um, so anyway, I highly re recommend Carolyn Sandel for, uh, 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 for an appointment to the Council on Aging. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Laura. Was there a second on that? Second. Yeah, okay, I, I thought I heard somebody say second. Really? You may have. I just missed it. Okay. Um, Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. I think she's muted, but it. I, I said yes, but there's a lot of thumping in the back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Councillor Mayori. <laughs> yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Motion is unanimous. Now, new business. Our next meeting is on November 1st, 2021 at four o'clock PM. I just wanted to let you know that I did a site visit on Glendale Road with the director, Donna Liscalia. And that was about two and a half weeks ago or so with a resident of mine who's an attorney and has two small children. Anyways, that appointment was set up on September 9th, I think it was at 9.30 a.m. And after we got finished with the site visit, we made some significant changes and so forth for the safety of this attorney and her two little girls because of apparently, which a lot of people don't know this, but hidden driveway signs are no longer legal anymore. And even I talked with Gina Louise Sheriff, she didn't realize that either. And to me, that is a biggie because a lot of people have driveways with a lot of curves and so forth. And we did have one there before, but because they did the reconstruction of Glendale Road, 
apparently it never was placed back there. So we went to make sure to see if that sign could come back up and it cannot. And it's a shame that the state made those rules of no longer placing no hidden driveway signs anymore. Anyways, I said to Donna, Donna, I'm looking at Facebook pages and the positions that you have available at the Department of Public Works. I said, as long as I've been a counselor, I have never seen anything like that. She said, counselor, I said, how many positions are you looking at? She said, at least 20, 20. That's a lot of positions. I said, you know, Donna, I said, I'd like to have you come in to city service if you don't mind in November. She said, no, I don't have a problem with that. And I think as counselors, we need to really talk with her on the serious being involved here with 20 positions. That's a lot of positions. And ask her how they're doing with fulfilling these positions, the type of positions that they need. They could be winter, they could be plowing, plowing or whatever, whatever is needed. And I have great concerns with that amount of positions. And she said some of them just up and quit on her, just up and quit. So I think it's our responsibility to be able to work with a director or the Department of Public Works and find out if and how they're doing with the applications, are, are they fulfilled, or what can we do as counselors to help her? So I don't know how you feel about that, counselors, if you would like to have her come in on November 1st or not. What's your choice? <laughs> yeah. That sounds appropriate to me. Is it okay with you, Councillor Quinlan? Councillor Miori? Yeah. Councillor Foster? Sure. Okay, so can, um, um, Laura, can yeah. you check that out with Donna? If you could sure. bring Sure, I can in. make a request to the mayor's office. Yeah. Uh, uh, Councillor Labarge, so the conversation will be, that, that will be the focus of the conversation because there's another time I, I thought about having a conversation about protocol um, with residents um, among big uh, DPW projects, but perhaps that's, that's fine. a better- we can add that too. You think? I just want, okay. We could add that, why not? I think that's important. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah, I just want to manage expectations when when uh, like Meadow Street residents want say what's going to happen now, exactly. and I, I had an idea of how that there would be more contact, and I just want to right. Be really You're going to get an update people. on it, and you can report okay. that to your residents. I would not see a problem with that. Okay, no problem. Okay, so we have one more final motion. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. Roll call, Laura. Yeah, Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Yes. And Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Have a good evening, everyone. See you soon, Rachel. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bye. See you. Yeah, <laughs> Very soon.